Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyke and MD from Out of the Doldrums. Here on this channel, we love nitric oxide and we love figuring out ways to maximize nitric oxide production in our bodies. We've talked a lot about things like eating beets, leafy greens, humming, optimizing our oral microbiome, all with the goal of increasing nitric oxide levels. Well, now we have one more tool to add to our toolbox, cacao. I've done a whole video on cacao and how it benefits our health. I'll be sure to link that in the description below. For the purposes of this video, when we talk about cacao, we're also talking about cocoa polyphenols or the beneficial compounds found in pure chocolate. We're talking like dark chocolate, not milk chocolate or the candy bars you regularly see in the grocery store. We're talking about high polyphenol cocoa or cacao. So one of the reasons why researchers think cacao has so many health benefits is because of its ability to increase nitric oxide in our body. Nitric oxide is one of three known gasotransmitters in our body. The other two, I'll bet you'll never guess them, are carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide. A gasotransmitter is a class of neurotransmitters, meaning it has unique tasks when it comes to molecular signaling. For nitric oxide, it's involved in relaxing blood vessels, which in turn promotes blood flow and reduces blood pressure. So how exactly does cacao work to increase nitric oxide? Researchers have shown that this is likely due to the activation of endothelial nitric oxide synthase, an enzyme responsible for the creation of nitric oxide when it's converted from L-arginine into nitric oxide. So it actually seems to increase production of nitric oxide. Here, for example, is a study showing that epicatechin, a polyphenol found in cacao, induces endothelial nitric oxide synthase activity in vitro or in a petri dish. For time frame, it seems to take 20 to 40 minutes after ingestion or eating it for nitric oxide production to be activated. Okay, so we know how this works in a petri dish, but what about in real people? What ramifications would this have on overall health? Let's start by reviewing this paper published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, or JAMA, in 2007. It's titled, quote, Effects of Low Habitual Cocoa Intake on Blood Pressure and Bioactive Nitric Oxide, end quote. This was a randomized controlled trial done in Germany. 44 adults with untreated prehypertension or stage 1 hypertension were selected and randomized into either a small amount of dark chocolate that was rich in polyphenols daily or polyphenol-free white chocolate. The amount of chocolate the participants ate was quite low. One square, for example, of this commercially available dark chocolate right here. It was found to contain 3.1 grams of cacao, a total of 30 milligrams of polyphenols, and 30 kilocalories of energy. The white chocolate, like we said, had no polyphenols. The participants were followed for 18 weeks after starting their treatment. Researchers checked their blood pressure, and they also measured a compound called S-nitrosoglutathione, which is a metabolic product of nitric oxide. So they were using that as a surrogate for nitric oxide levels. Researchers found that after dark chocolate intake, levels of S-nitrosoglutathione increased compared to unchanged levels in the white chocolate group. To add to this, researchers found that the increase in S-nitrosoglutathione was also correlated with lower systolic and diastolic blood pressures. They concluded that inclusion of small amounts of polyphenol-rich dark chocolate efficiently reduced blood pressure and improved formation of nitric oxide. Moving on, there's another measurement of blood flow called flow-mediated dilatation, or FMD. This is a commonly used laboratory value that can measure dilation or widening of an artery when blood flow increases in the artery. The primary cause of flow-mediated dilation is the release of nitric oxide by the cells that line our blood vessels, or the endothelial cells. Flow-mediated dilation is measured using ultrasound, and the higher the value, the more blood flow seen. Many things increase flow-mediated dilation, including exercise, as well as eating certain foods. Another thing, though, that increases flow-mediated dilation is, you guessed it, cacao. Here is a clinical trial published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology in 2008. This was a double-masked, randomized, controlled trial. 
And this study demonstrated that patients who have diabetes who drink a flavanol-rich cocoa beverage three times a day for 30 days showed improvement in vascular function, mainly measured by flow-mediated dilation. The study concluded that this intervention could reduce cardiovascular risk in people with type 2 diabetes. So this is great news. A small amount of polyphenol-rich cacao can result in not only increased nitric oxide production, but a decrease in blood pressure and increased blood flow throughout our bodies. Bring on the cacao. All right, it's a wrap. I hope you found this video informative and applicable. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of this video, and let us know how you're planning to improve your nitric oxide production. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and aloha.